Hi there, this is Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, uh, www.echolaketech.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a calendar in your Bubble app um, to create events and uh, look at the details in those events as well as to uh, delete events. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do here is I've got a, uh, a page already created. Um, we're going to go to plugins and um, you will see here I've already got the full calendar uh, which we'll be using plugged in um, but in case you're not sure how to do that you go to add plugins calendar and you'll see full calendar right there and then basically what we do is we come over here click on calendar and uh, we'll make this a good size calendar there. All right, now, first thing we want to do is double click on this and type of events. Now, I've also gone in here already and created a new uh, data type called calendar event. And um, we have under the calendar event, these two different fields, uh, end date and time the event name, and the start date and time. Uh, so we've got that already set up. We'll go back to design, double click, and the type of event is going to be calendar event. And the data source, now we're going to make this uh, simple uh, in this example, and we're going to do a search for calendar event. So this is basically going to tell Bubble to search for all the calendar events and show them on our calendar here. Uh, the start time field, start date and time, and the end, just like that. Event caption, current event, and then it gives you this option current event, and then it's going to be event name. So basically what we've done so far is We've told Bubble we're going to search for all the calendar events. We've got the start time and time field defined here. And then we have the event caption, basically the, the name of the event. You can see it's preloaded here with event. Um, it's going to be current events, um, current events, event name. And now what we need to do is um, collect that information. And I'm going to do this with uh, pop-ups. And basically, we're going to create a pop-up here, and this one will be to uh, to create an event. So what we'll do is we'll just say create event, and then just to make this a little bit neater, we'll double-click on it. We'll make it bold, change the color up a little bit, center it, and then. I'll make this just a little bit smaller. We're going to center this. So what I did was I right-clicked or on the uh, on the uh, Apple machine, used uh, two clicks on the uh, the pad here, and then uh, we're going to center horizontally like that. All right. Now what we want to do is uh, we're going to add a little bit more text. And this one will be start date and time. Make that just a little bit wider. And then I'm going to just copy and paste that. And then we'll have double click on that end date and time. All right, so now we need um, actually. Let's do event name like that. And now what we need to do is come down to our inputs. And so for the input, we're actually going to be using the date and time picker for the start and end dates. Double click on that. Now you'll see right now it's only got the date, and what we want is the date and the time. 
We'll spread that out a little bit like that. Actually, make it a little bit like that. All right, I just want to check on the height. Looks like I'm going to try a height of 35 on that. And so this is going to be, I'm just going to call this start time. And I'm going to copy and paste that. And end time, like that. OK. So now we have that all set up. Now, one of the other things I want to do is, um, from a user experience perspective, uh, I want the end time as a default to make it a little bit easier to be the start times value and then plus one hour. Now again, you, can, you have some different options here for changing the, the modify the value and um, all I did was simply pick hours and then the one is one extra hour like that. Um, the other thing I want to do again from a user experience is the minimum date. Now you don't have to do this but um, I'm going to assume that we're going to go f from current date forward for creating events like that. And that basically tells Bubble that the date in here has to be um, greater than, actually I'm going to do it on this one too, today's date. And just clean this up a little bit. Now we're going to put a text field in here for the event name. Let's see, what do we say? This was 35 and 147. I like 145 for that one, 140. So change that to 145. Make this 35 and 145. I think these are, uh, let's see, all lined up. Um, oops, I looked at the wrong number there. 180, sorry. All right, 145, 145, 145, good. All right, so the next thing we want to do is put a button on here. And uh, actually, we're going to have two buttons. First one, create, create event. And just copy, paste this one. And this one, we're just going to say close. So then that way, if a user pops this up and decides they don't really want to create an event, they can just close it without creating the event. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit here. All right, so create event. Uh, actually, do I have, I want to check something. OK, one thing also for this pop-up, we need to set this as calendar event of type calendar event. And we also want the data to be from calendar A's current event. So then again, this way, when we go from the calendar here and click on one of the dates and we open up the pop-up, this basically says that this window here, this pop-up, the content is going to be associated with calendar A's current event, which is what we want. So then when we create the event with a push button here, it'll save it to the database correctly. Okay. So the next thing we want to go and do is uh, workflows. Um, but first what we want to do here is now you'll see under elements, all I did was I went to the workflow here into elements and when an events, calendar's event is clicked or a calendar's day is clicked. Now the difference between these two is if you have um, an event already. So like in here that this event is already created. You basically want to use that for your workflow. If you want to create a new event on a particular day, then you click calendars day. 
So we're going to do that because we're going to be creating an event. And then what we're going to do here is we're actually going to um, display data. So we need to tell Bubble that we want this. It's this calendar's current event. So this is telling Bubble I want this data to be pushed, if you will, up to the pop-up. And then what we want to do is we want to show the pop-up like that. And then what we're going to do is come over to the pop-up and create the event. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be creating a new thing. That new thing is going to be a calendar event. Let's slide this over. And then the end date and time is going to be the end date and time input value. And the event name is going to be, where is it? Uh, nope, I guess I didn't change the name. I'll do that in a second. Um, the input A is value. And then start time is going to be start time's value like that. Let me just go back and so event name like that. So when we go back to the workflow, we can see that um, it changed to event name. And now what we want to do in the pop-up is after it's created the new event, we actually want to go and reset the data in the calendar, uh, the pop-up. And the reason being is so that the next time you open up the calendar event or the user opens up the calendar event, it doesn't have the prior uh, entries data. And then the next thing we want to do is hide it. All right. So at this point, oh, I wanted to do one other thing. Back to the... We want to close. Actually, I'm going to reset the, the data on this one again in case there was some data typed into there. Um, again, it just kind of gives it a clean slate for the next time that the uh, pop-up is open. And we would want to, oops, we don't want to show it because it's already showing. We want to hide it. All right. Now, at this point, we should be able to create an event. And let's take a look. All right, as you can see, I've got some preloaded data from another uh, app that I've been working on. But let's just click on this. So pop-up opened. Let's do something on the 23rd at 4 o'clock, like that. And then you see that it automatically, uh, if you remember, we had it so that it would be one hour later. Um, make it two hours later. And... Um, meeting and create event and there it is now when I when I click on it you see there's nothing happens nothing uh, opens up with information but if I click down here it's going to try to create another event on that same day so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go back and we are going to create um, another pop-up here. And this one, we will show the, the information. So again, calendar event, data source, calendars A, uh, event. And what we're going to do here is put some text. And we're just going to say, event information like that do a little bit of cleanup on it save it make that a little bit smaller and center it horizontally like that and let's see here what we want is 
we want the event name like that and event start time event end time like that and what we're going to do here is our groups event name like that and then we want the uh, where's uh, end time start time like that and then the calendar events end time like that and I'm gonna go in and just kinda make this look a little bit neater um, start time Oop, make that bold I'm gonna put a hyphen in there like that all right and we're just going to make this aesthetically a little bit more pleasing. And put another like that. All right. And I'm just going to spread that out a little bit, make it horizontal, add a button, and close. The workflow flow for it is going to be hide. Um, did we name this yet? We did. Good. Pop up calendar event. Oh, it's got the same name though. So let's do this. Calendar event info. So we go there. Calendar event info, like that. And just make this a little bit smaller. Okay, let's take a look at this. And basically, uh-oh, aha, we forgot a step. Remember in the workflows before, when we had calendar A's Days clicked. Well, that was for creating. We need the event. And what we need to do here is we need to display data into info and this calendar event. Oops. This calendar. Uh, there. Uh, and then we want to show the pop-up like that. Okay, now this should work. And there it is. There's the information you can see. We'll just go and clean that up a little bit. Event info. Looks like the, the colors, yep. Yeah. Make it a little more consistent. And preview. Okay. There we go. We'll just do another one here. So, 25th, 4 o'clock, or no, 2 o'clock rather. And meeting number two, great event. And there it is. Now what we could also do is, I'm just gonna move this over like that, and I'm gonna create another button. And what we're gonna do with it is delete event like that. And go to the workflow. And basically, we're going to go to data things here, delete thing, like that. And preview it. Delete event. Oh, and you know what? We forgot to close.
All right. So let's go create an event. Um, three, yeah, one thirty there. An hour long in a meeting. Number three. Great event. There it is. Meeting number three. And then we can delete it, just like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's kind of a quick one to show you how to use the calendar plugin uh, to create events, uh, show the information of the events, and also to delete the events. Um, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to do. Um, that's one of the beautiful things of, of Bubble is how powerful and easy it is to use. Uh, so thank you again. And we'll talk to you on the next video.